Wow. I mean, wow. When it comes to text to image AI art generation, Mid Journey is by far ahead of everybody else, in my opinion. And now they've just gone and released version 5.1. This is getting ridiculous. Let's check it out. So as I said, when it comes to text to image AI art, Mid Journey, as far as I'm concerned, is in a league of its own. And when it moved to version 5.0, the results that people were getting, especially when it came to kind of photography and stuff like that, were stunning. Well, they're not resting on their laurels, ladies and gentlemen. They have just released version 5.1, and this will blow your mind. I did a different video when they first launched version 5, and I was just blown away. And I've used the same prompt. Now, it does have a seed. But we'll just have a look. So these these were generated today using version 5.1. And we'll have a look at the original version. And you can sort of be the judge. So this picture is the one that I did with the original prompt. Uh, and I used actually a seed. It's based on a photograph of my um, girlfriend, but don't tell her. Anyway, it's based on a, a seed that I used. And I just really like the results of this particular prompt. And this was one of the first great, great images that I got from version five. So I thought I'd use the same prompt on version 5.1. I'm going to put them side by side. So actually we'll do a full picture. So this is with version 5.1. Again, you're never going to get the identical picture, but it's just really about some of the quality. Look at the kind of slightly the Bocker effect here just around her face because of the nature of the, the lens the detail on the face and stuff like that. This lovely Bokka out of focus effect here with the lights coming through again, Bokka effect on there. Just really, really stunning images. So there we go. If I just move my head out of the way slightly so you can see a bit. Um, so there we go. Those are the pictures side by side. And in fairness, there's not a lot of, uh, you could say there's not a lot of difference between them. It's just, I like the kind of the background uh, on here and the, the kind of the light coming through the hair and stuff like that uh, and the kind of much slightly stronger Bokka effect uh, that you're getting overall. But as I say, the results that people are getting are absolutely stunning. This is fairly a basic uh, kind of photograph. And you can be, the, you know, the judge, really. There's a bit more colour in this one in the face, I think. Some of the lip details and the eyes are slightly different as well in terms of you can see a bit more of the colour in the eyes and the reflection in the eyes. But anyway, you get the idea. So um, let's have a look at what the main differences are with Mid Journey version 5.1. So it's going here. We're testing. So it's again, it's just in the test phase. We're testing a version 5.1 image system. Version 5.1 is more opinionated like version 4 and is much easier to use with short prompts. So the great beauty of version 4 is you could put in quite short prompts, um, you know, man riding a bike you know, that kind of stuff. Whereas what they wanted you to do with version five is to come out with really rich and natural language prompts. So for instance, I'd set something up with chat GPT to teach it those prompts. And it came out with like prose, like a whole paragraph to get really incredible images. But it looks like what they're doing is kind of going back to slightly more kind of simple language requirement uh, for version 5.1. And they're therefore making it a bit easier to get out a certain prompts. Now, they say there is an unopinionated mode for version 5.1 called raw mode. And of course, they haven't discarded version 5. So if you're used to that. But the main changes between version 5.1 and version 5 are higher coherence, more accuracy to text prompts, fewer unwanted borders or text artifacts. So I've had some where it's given an extra border at the top and the bottom. So I've sort of ask for it usually when I've said you know make it 16 by 9 and it almost makes it sort of 21 by 9 or something and improved sharpness in order to do it you just go to your settings and you can click version 5.1 or you just type dash dash v 5.1 after your prompt for raw mode just click the raw mode button in the settings or put dash dash style raw 
So those are the main things there. So if I go to my uh, little art studio here, this original quote that I used here um, is actually picked it up quite um, a bit better than the original thing. They're looking surprised there. My original quote here is I used a, a picture, a portrait, and I used a seed of an existing portrait. I was trying to sort of create something very similar to my the existing photograph. But I put in here for use on a YouTube thumbnail. OK, now when I first did it, um, you just got like quite a plain face. I specifically said looking surprised and in version five it didn't really look that surprised. But here we are getting more surprised. So this is a great one uh, here with with the mouth open there. And then I did variations on that one. And look, you've got some great, you know, great YouTube that sort of jumped on that YouTube thumbnail, um, giving it quite a plain a plain look and that kind of purple background, which is what I kind of wanted. Uh, this this has come out quite well if you wanted it as a YouTube background. I could use that as a YouTube background or a thumbnail. So that's quite, quite good. But it also had this kind of slightly more kind of cool, slight neon backlit one, similar to the uh, original version that I did as well. But why don't we try something a bit more uh, sophisticated? This is a lovely high angle photograph. So much more in the photographic style uh, let's try this and repeat this. I'm going to just change the settings. So what we want is version 5.1. We're going version 5.1 there. And then I'm going, I'm going to just try it out. So we're going to try it out. So we're going to just try this out. High angle photograph above a beautiful Japanese woman wearing a white dress, gold necklace, shot on a uh, Lomography, color negative 800. Okay, 5.1. Okay, so this is interesting here. It's giving it a, a frame here. We specifically look for a high angle. It's taking it much more obviously than, than this kind of photograph before. If we see here, let me just open it in browser here. So very much more clearly taking us at that high, high angle on a much more obvious perspective compared to the previous version that I did, which was this here. Th this version has got a, a vignette around it. Maybe that's, the nat uh, maybe that's the nature of the particular camera I use. I just nick the prompts from somebody else, if I'm honest. Let's have a, a, a look at something a bit more sophisticated. Okay, we're going to go for this. This will be interesting. So this is not a person. Let's see what they come up with this. This was for a thumbnail I made on my, one of my other channel, my gaming channel. So it'll be interesting to see how it treats objects rather than uh, people but this is uh, interesting wow okay wow now this is this is a real difference here this is much more vivid if we go to the original one i think you see the impact on a kind of a longer description like this on a, on a on a more simple description this is a much more simple description okay so this was with with version uh, this is, what was the prompt? This was an Xbox controller blowing up slow-mo photography, highly detailed, cinematic 8K detailed 16 by 9. Okay, this was the original with version 5. Now, you see what I mean? There's a black line at the top here. But if you can quite see it here, put a random border on it. Um, but very good, really nice photography, slow-mo photography, an Xbox controller on fire, just what I wanted. But look at this, much more going on there. This one almost seems like liquid, which is really interesting. Um, it's decided to kind of give it that kind of more liquidy explosion going on. That's really weird. But this is so much more impact and power on these, on these ones. Uh, let me see if I can, if I just separate that and we look at it side by side. Okay, so there we go. Those are the two, so two prompts side by side. You can kind of see there, this just much more dynamic. I mean, look at this. This is really a nice uh, image. This one just below my head here. If I just take my head out of the way again, uh, just so you can see, really, really nice uh, looking image. You might kind of not think, oh, there's not much difference between between them, but I just think, you know, it's it's really much more dynamic, much more interesting. Um, this one here and then what's this really strange but this is really great but this kind of liquid is explosion going on as i said on this one really really um 
interesting. But this is just so powerful. This number one, number three down here. Really like that. I really like that. Well, I'm going to go with this. I was a bit disappointed with this picture here, which was meant to be a wrecking ball smashing into a tall building. And it's one here. This is it. This is why I was disappointed. Photograph of a wrecking ball swinging into a tall tower made of Xbox controllers. Okay, that's what I wanted. Don't ask. It's for a thumbnail. Okay, now we're going to see this, whether it takes it a bit more literally, understands uh, a bit more. I mean, you might feel that the differences are, are, are quite subtle, but I think, you know, I'm not a prompt expert. I borrow most of my prompts from other people and then just sort of put spins on them and just get inspired by other people. I can't get over these Xbox controllers. So much more vivid, so much more stuff going on. Really, really like it. Okay, now this is quite interesting. Because last time I tried this, it was meant to be a tower of Xbox. and It wasn't any Xbox controller. It's managed. It's still not what I wanted. And that's partly down to me. It can't make up its mind whether the wrecking ball should be the Xbox controller or the tower. And it's got a bit confused. But at least it's sort of attempted to put an Xbox controller in there, whereas previously it didn't. Right. The other thing that I did, uh, let's have a look at this with these clockwork fish. Okay, some interesting clockwork fish. So let's try this out. Macro photography, very specific camera details and see what difference this has in 5.1. I'm trying to sort of put in different types of things. So we've had a port, a sort of fairly interesting portrait. We've done a very specific object. We've done something quite obscure, a kind of a mix of stuff. Now we're doing this sort of macro photography with these fish underwater. Now that was the thing. In that last prompt, it missed the bit underwater and it just presented this sort of clockwork fish on pedestals, on, on stands of some sort. OK, so now they haven't put it on stands. There's a lot of detail in here. I mean, the luminescence, they got the luminescence in the metal a lot. These are really, especially on this, you can't perhaps really tell, but there's a real luminescence going on the metal here. Almost, almost rusting as well, some of this metal. The detail in it, again, the kind of iridescent luminescence going on on that kind of, that metal. A lot of detail. A bit messed up there on, on some of the cogs. A bit weird going on here. And there's some fish in the background on this as well. Just try to put it in a kind of underwater scenario. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure which one of those I liked. OK, so here's the original version again, iridescent and lighting. I quite like the lighting on them, but it didn't it put it on stands on these pedestals. That's the weird thing. I'm looking at some of the detail. A kind of strange um, detail, but let's look at the, the new one. I think the colors are much more bright. And definitely a bit of sharpness you know, around the eye and stuff. I mean, there's definitely a, a difference there. We'll do one more test. In fact, why don't we do a more, another portrait one, actually? High fashion one. Here's the high fashion one. Again, I mean, look at this. Look at this one, number one. Incredible. Incredible. Number three. Really, really good. I'm not sure about number two that comes from the lip work there. I'm not sure. But definitely one and two, just stunning. Lovely out of focus there, bokeh effect going on. Really, really nice, really powerful. This is quite, before is very good as well. Let's have a look at the original. So this was the original. I mean, the hair, lovely, great hair here. And the hair, the detail in the hair, really, really nice. It's not a lot in it, to be honest. Really long descriptions. The point is, could you achieve the same thing with a smaller description? That's, that's the key thing. I mean, stunning anyway, version 5, version 5.1, absolutely stunning. Let's imagine. 
I've what I've done actually, I've created some amazing of these sort of graffiti style images. I've got one of uh, Mario and one of a Xbox controller, and I've had them put onto stretch canvas and ordered them. And you know, I've got one of them on the wall at the moment. Okay, there's a lot of detail going on here. I really like this as well, actually, because yeah. There's much more of a distinction. It's almost in that kind of, I don't know what the word, but like a kind of Banksy style face and then the different media uh, placed on top, which is much more in line with the style of artwork. There's sort of like old bits of wallpaper pattern in the background here. And and as I say, it's a, the face is much more a kind of almost like a black and white print or a pastel, a faded pastel and then painted on the, the lips. This is really good. There's a lot more variety going on here than in the original. Let's have a look at the, the original. So this is with version five. So this is version five. Not quite as, it's, it's quite interesting. It, it seems more art, artistically, though that sort of, this one's more drawn than sort of an old painting. The idea is it's like an old lithograph or old painting or black and white photograph and then sort of washed out or screen printed. And then they put on, use lots of different media and stuff on top. That's the idea of it. Um, not quite as vibrant. Whereas we go back to this one, um, this is much closer to it, especially this one. It looks more like a kind of an old black and white advert or poster, as I say, that's been sort of screen printed, almost Banksy-like. And then they put on all this vibrant color. Uh, again, let's have a look at back. This is version five. And this is version 5.1. Version five, version 5.1. A bit more vivid, I think, a bit more interesting. Is there more detail? I don't know, there's lots of patterns. And they, it, they talk about the random writing, saying there's less random writing going on. So this is in version five. There's there's more more sort of this random writing that appears in letters which they try to cut out. Whereas um, here, I think they've successfully sort of cut it out. Talking of writing, let's see how it handles writing and words and text. I'm not expecting it to do any miracles. So we'll do one I did before and failed miserably on. So here, photograph of a shaved headed bold man in his 30s wearing square glasses, holding a subscribe sign. Never does square glasses like there. There, he's got his square glasses, but... Yeah. Now, the picture's definitely better than before. This one's a bit stylistic. I like the background. Quite plain. There's something interesting about the colours in this. They're quite kind of drab colours, which is quite interesting. But yeah, can't spell for toffee, can it? That's going to have to go to Photoshop or Pixel R or Canva or whatever it is you use and then replace that. But this one, the one at the bottom here, really good detail. Slightly different looking bloke than they normally come up with when I originally tried this in version 5. But anyway, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it useful. Uh, do you see a, a major difference, a small difference? Again, it, until you experiment with it, try a few things. I think the main difference is in the prompt language. You don't have to use quite as much prose as they wanted you to do in version five. And I think that's the key change. You're going to get incredible details, incredible results without such long lengthy natural language use you can perhaps be a bit more prompt shorter on your prompts and stuff like that i'm not sure It'd be interesting to see what other results people get out of this but anyway let me know down in the comments below what you like which versions you like have you experimented with it and all of that and of course don't forget to hit the likes because i like it youtube likes it and it helps people like you find content like this and if you are new here do me the great honor hit that subscribe button toggle that notification bell that way you'll know when I go live with content just and if you want more AI and AI art related content from me why don't you check out the videos over here yeah these ones right here I think you'll enjoy them thanks for watching